It's the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. Sometimes you reach out for the hot tag. And you go ahead and make your own comeback. Don't do that. That's when you should quit wrestling. And you're better off rolling in thumbtacks. Hey, do the hardest part of the ring. Hey, the hardest part of the ring. I've got the... Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. Let's keep snapping. We'll pick it up. You got the guy in an abdominal stretch, and you grab the rope for extra leverage, and you get a concussion from the angry rush, and you get paid with a diet soft beverage on the hardest part of the ring. Hey, the hardest part of the ring. The baby face has your wrestler pinned. Uh, wait, hold on. It's been a while. Sometimes you're distracting the referee, because the baby face has your wrestler pinned. Then you jump up on the ring apron and you realize all the trouble you're in because it's the hardest part of the ring. Hey, the hardest part of the ring. Now double claps. Clap, 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 clap. The hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring. ba da ba da Whoa, yay. What is going on, Bob Squad? What are we bushwhacking our way through this time? It's the Royal Rumble. Remember that? You missed that? I missed that. That's okay. It's done. It's over. The past is the past, Bob. Nothing left but death now. Okay, the Royal Rumble of 2023. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's jump right into it. No, I didn't watch any of the pre-show. Were there matches on it? Maybe. There's no way of knowing except looking it up. But we're not going to be doing that because uh, where are my notes? I wrote down everything that was going to happen. I missed I just deleted a huge chunk of audio because I lost my notes even though I was staring at them. My handwriting was so bad I couldn't tell if I was reading something written by myself hours ago or a week ago. These things happen. Oh, uh, We open the show. Of course the show starts 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. If you're on the West Coast like myself, I'm in San Diego, America's finest city. My address is 782... Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right now. I live in a part of San Diego called Carney Mesa, which, if you didn't know, is Spanish for go straight on red. A lot of people don't know that information. Uh, Jeff Hardy is uh, heavier, and he sings a country song or something, or he does an intro. No, it's not. It's another guy named Hardy, and he's a, he's a country rapper with a rock band. I don't know who the hell this guy is. Te it's later San Antonio, Texas. Seemed to know who he was. I'll give him that. And the show opens with a big Royal Rumble return, Pat McAfee. Mm. So the audience really likes him. He was really excited. I do have a, a minor gripe with the the first big super energy pop of the night going to someone who's going to be an announcer for the night. It's like a little odd, but whatever. But he's a popular guy. A lot of people listen to this podcast, of course. Uh, so blah 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 blah. So they see a famous person. He goes, <laughs> "The show's got eighty wrestlers on it, and they have to wait for the announcer to come out for the people to go." Oh, a celebrity! What happened? We opened the show oddly with the thirty men, thirty man men's manly he, he man, uh, his him WWE Royal Rumble. Okay, and uh, Gunther is first. And Sheamus is second. And later on, Johnny Gargano returns. And Johnny Gargano stared at Sheamus as Sheamus is beating the Miz with the Beats of the Bowery while she Miz is on the ring apron, is the hardest part of the ring. And Miz gets eliminated first. Oh, shout out to Applebee's was a, a great quote that came from either Corey or Pat McAfee, I forget. Applebee's had a logo on the countdown, so when you went 10, 9, 8, 7, Six five four three two. I forget how it ends. Uh, Applebee's had a counter, and then New Day is. And this is early on. And I'm not going to go through entrant by entrant. That's kind of silly. But early on, the New Day pretends uh, they're going to wrestle each other, and they hold each other. Uh, Kofi is held upside down in a wheelbarrow position by Xavier Woods, and they look directly at the hard camera and slap each other's butts several times like the Congos and laugh. And this happened in a wrestling match. Okay? And number 12, Lashley comes out. Excuse me, Lesnar comes in. Well, I gave that away. Lesnar comes in and a place loses their minds. He tosses some people out. But as Lesnar goes face-to-face -face with Gunther and they trade a few blows but nothing, and everyone loses their minds, that's the match they want to see. 
Lashley comes out immediately to, to remind us of the Lesnar match. Not the one we want to see, but the one they're going to give us. And Lashley hits the clothesline on Brock, and Brock Lesnar tumbles out. And you know, Lesnar is the only one who uh, takes that backwards clothesline over the top bump without grabbing the rope. He just reaches back for the ring apron, his hardest part of the ring, and goes out in the exact same one. I think it even better with um, Drew McIntyre. That was three years ago. That was the like the last big pre-COVID one. Uh, that's the one Edge won. No, he well, he did not win that one. I forget. Yeah, excuse me, he did not. Edge did the big Edge moment wasn't that one though. Edge won the year after. Uh, in a, and then like an empty building and whatever, he won in a warehouse. So uh, Lesnar is very upset and he smashes the stairs into the announce equipment, which is funny. And he's tossing people. He throws a referee into into the ring, uh, over the ring barricade, and it's very dangerous. Baron Corbin decides to enter the uh, the Rumble during all this, and Lesnar sees him and uh, gives him the F5 on the outside of the ring, I think. I think it was the F5. And Seth Rollins enters and throws Corbin in, and Corbin gets tossed right out. And I think it was um, Pat McAfee who refers to Peacock Network as the cock. Pat McAfee called it the cock live on the cock. He said the cock on the cock. Cock. Why did I say cock like William Shatner? Because I'm watching it on the cock. The cock. And uh, Rey Mysterio's music hits, but he doesn't come out. He never comes out. We don't see him. Maybe he was still here in San Diego with the, with the 619 area code. Dialing up some uh, Pizza Hut, which was the sponsor of this program. We know because modern day premiere live events on the cock are interrupted by commercials. So you can... They, they, they do it between matches. It, it's strategic. But if you're watching something like WrestleMania 3, where the irresistible force meets the movable object, which, by the way, is with Hulk Hogan slam Andre the Giant, you could be watching Hulk Hogan about to slam Andre the Giant, all of a sudden the thing stops and there's a commercial for State Farm Insurance. That's what you get on the cock. But we could only sit on the cock for so long. We have to move forward. <laughs> Hot damn. Son of a bitch. Dominic Mysterio comes out right after the missing Rey Mysterio, and Dominic has a Rey mask, suggesting that he beat up Rey, and Dominic rips up the mask. And the announcers are a little all over the place. They were showing a few things that going on at once. Seth Rollins has very blue pants, very blue. And Booker T shows up in amazing shape for a guy's age. He hits a few kicks, does a spin of Rooney. Someone tosses him. I don't, don't recall who. It was probably... Um, no, Austin Theory was not out yet. Never will get to him. I honestly have no idea, but it, would, it was probably a heel. I would imagine it would be. But Lashley does get taken out by Seth Rollins fairly quickly, too. Which makes sense, because there's no point. Lashley's done everything he's supposed to do in there. And he's not winning, so why does he need to... He doesn't need to be out there. Because when you have a guy that size out there, the longer he's out there, the more people have to wonder why he hasn't thrown everyone over the top rope four times already. So, get him out before we start asking questions. This was really, really a well done rumble. It's really one of the best ones in years. Um, I'll put this one better than 2020. In 2020, when that one happened, that was the best one in decades. But yeah, this was really outstanding. And then the rest of the show happened. Okay. Uh, Booker T got thrown out by whoever, some heel, I would imagine. I couldn't really tell you who. And why would I waste your time? But be that as it may. That notwithstanding, nevertheless. Uh, Edge, speaking to speak of the devil. Well, he lives in hell. That's my old buddy, uh, my buddy cousin Luke's joke. Whenever someone says, speak of the devil. Well, he goes by many names. Beelzebub, Lucifer, he lives in hell. Okay. <laughs> Edge comes out. He throws out Finn Balor and Damian Priest because they're in the Judgment Day. It was probably Priest and or Balor who threw Booker T out, most likely. Uh, actually, no, I think it was Priest. But anyway, Edge throws them out, and he's about to throw out Dominic, but he does not. Uh, something happens, I forget what. And I think that the, the Judgment Day just kind of pulls Edge off the apron or reaches up and pulls him out or something like that. They did Edge. They gave Edge one of those shitty, screwy eliminations um, where he's eliminated by guys who are already out. They did one of those to Edge. So Edge wasn't in there for more than a minute or two. Um, he had shorter hair. It was like two or three inches long. 
need to know that. Then Austin Theory is there. Oh yeah, and as Edge walks to the back, Austin Theory does not get involved with this, which is smart. Uh, Rhea Ripley clotheslines Edge. And Rhea turns around. It's Beth Phoenix. And Beth Phoenix gives Rhea the spear on the outside. Wow. Will Rhea make it to the Royal Rumble? I don't know. I don't know. There's no way of knowing. Omos is tall. And Braun Strowman comes out as well. So that's giant after giant. Then Rick O'Shea, the great Irishman. Rick O'Shea, um... Uh, is joining, so we're filling it up again. We're wait, we're filling it up for the next clearance, and we are in a uh, Rick O'Shea was number twenty eight, so we are actually getting down there. And at this point, <laughs> Michael Cole will not stop goofing on top dollar of Smack, and it's the greatest thing ever because Cole can be a, a dick when you can tell Cole knows this guy shouldn't be on fucking TV, and now um, he's got a little more freedom to say it. I emphasize a little more, but anyway, uh, he refers to him as that goofy top dollar. Top Dollar is not in this match, by the way. He lost a qualifying Rumble match to Rick O'Shea, the great Irish fighter. And then Braun, Str Braun Strowman. Can we talk about his booger problem? He's got a problem with his boogers. I let it go once or twice because he's big and you're breathing hard and unfortunately the beard catches everything and it's gross. But every match for like the last six weeks, there's either a booger or some saliva or something in his beard and mustache at all times. It's gross. It's really, really gross. What... What is the problem with, with um, Bastion Strowman? If you got that. Or Braun Booger. Braun Booger. That, that's going to be his name on this podcast. I'll just call him Booger from Revenge of the... Because he reminds me of the Revenge of the Nerds guy anyway. Um, who yelled, Nerds! Was it Ogre? I think it was Ogre. Ogre yelled, Nerds! And there was a good guy named Booger. But I think Ogre j would join the Nerds later. But anyway. Booger. Booger and, and uh, Omos have a, a thing, and Omos gets a lot of lined out because he's very big, and they have to address it. But he also sucks, so they, they took him out of there pretty quickly. But number 29 is Logan Paul. Logan Paul is here. Let's, I don't know. He's great when it's advertised and he's billed, but now he's just here taking up a spot. Um, anyway... The, the most physically impressive thing of the night, and it's actually overshadowed by the drama later on, which is a good thing, is uh, Logan and Rick O'Shea, the great Irishman, both both are on the opposing ring aprons, which are the two hardest parts of the ring. And they, they both do a springboard on the top rope at the same time. This is really hard to do. And meet in the middle. It's a 20 by 20 ring. They each fly 10 feet high in the air and clothesline each other in the middle of the ring this is the thing you do with your action figures when you are a kid because you have a crazy imagination and it's impossible. So you do it. So they did it as humans and it's amazing. Amazing. I think Rick O'Shea didn't last too long after that, but I guess Logan Paul, unbeknownst to me because I did miss it, rolled under the bottom rope at some point. So we have Seth Rollins in there. Gunther. I have to address this too as well. I'm sorry. Gunther was number one and delivered endless chops and he turned everyone's chest to hamburger meat and uh, Seamus was number two and fought like a bastard in this thing and Drew McIntyre I forget he was four five six he was a, he was a few after Seamus basically Gunther Seamus and Drew were this entire freaking thing beat the hell out of each other beat the hell out of everyone got beaten up the three of them are all MVPs ultimately Gunther is the MVP of this so we'll, we'll get that in a second but the three of them are really MVPs throughout this entire thing. Uh, number 30, of course, was the returning Cody Rhodes. I think it's getting a little goofy and predictable that number 30 is always a special, special entrant, and it's always some kind of return. And number 30 would, number thirty is one way too many rumbles. They used to make this big deal to say, oh, 27 because of Hogan and Yoko and uh, somebody else, I forget. No, bullshit, I think it's 30. Last year... Both Brock and Ronda Rousey won at number 30. It was ridiculous. Uh, Cena's won at number 30. Who else has won at 30 to help prove my point that now I can't think of any, but it seems like every year number 30 wins the goddamn thing. I don't really know. What, what number was Edge in 2021? What number was... was no, Drew was in, a long, in it for the long haul in 2020. I don't know. I'm not going to go through all of them, but 
I think you get the, you get the idea here. Number thirty tends to do really well. Which ex to me in, to me if number thirty wins even half the time, that exposes the bombacity of this match. But we love this match because it's so much fun. But oh well. Cody Rhodes is in there. He looks great. He's hitting all the maneuvers. He's throwing some people. Uh, things are happening. Him and Te Seth never touch. This is important. Him and Seth never touch. Seth was the guy who took him out of the injury last June. And Seth was a heel then, and now he's not. So they have to be a little careful. And you can't be split in the crowd. And also, the people are not getting Sammy in this match. They get Sammy later. So... It's not time to be playing Let's Split the Crowd with Cody Rhodes. That's like a year or two down the road. Not right now. Not not with WrestleMania coming up. Uh, Logan, uh, Drew and Sheamus do go out. I think Gunther tossed them both out together or something like that. So it looks like it's uh, Seth, Cody, Gunther, and Seth and Cody have the... I love how they did this because I was nervous about... If they totally ignore it, that looks really stupid. And if they fight each other, then we split the crowd, and that's a bad idea for WrestleMania. So they face off. They have the stare down. They totally acknowledge it. And Seth is acting like the heel in a situation, even though he's a babyface, because, I mean, he is the one who did the dastardly attack, and he's owning it. But either way, they have the face off, but Gunther is still there to stop them from fighting because they have to worry about him. Gunther looks like he's, he's, he's been through the ringer and he has, and he was in there, I think, ultimately 71 minutes or something crazy like that. He has broken the record for being in there the longest in one match <laughs> forever. And I think the last 10 minutes of that was him versus Cody. Because Logan Paul apparently had not been eliminated. Logan Paul saw, tosses Seth, which Lee, I was wondering what the hell they're going to do with Seth at Mania. Seth will probably have a really good match with Logan Paul is most likely what's going to happen. And I'm only basing this on the show I just watched. Um, Logan Paul is going to be one of those guys who wrestles at every big show. And uh, some fans will love it and eat it up. Some so others will say he's taking a spot away from someone. And WrestleMania is going to draw regardless. So why do we need him? And everyone's going to have that fight. I'm not interested in that fight. I don't really care. Um, I think I'm kind of... Uh, what's the point of this? What's the point? I don't know. It, it looks like a give Seth something to do scenario, which I guess Logan Paul is that guy, but whatever. When Logan Paul does stuff with The Miz, The Miz is there because we need something for Logan Paul. If Logan Paul shows up to wrestle Seth Rollins, because we need something for Seth Rollins. You know what I mean? Nah, who gives a fuck? Okay. Cody Rhodes and Gunther basically have a match for seven, eight, ten minutes, something like that, and beat the, ha the hell out of each other. They had to do this. And they need it in code, and basically one guy, the heel, the monster heel, has been wrestling for an hour. So why is there any sympathy on the baby face? Well, the announcer sold the hell out of the, the pectoral surgery, of course, and everything else. And Cody has a story behind him. They made it work. I think it was difficult, and I think they achieved it anyway. And they did make it work. It's really a hard thing to make work. It's really a strange thing to, to make work in every rumble when the baby face comes in towards the end to clear house on the heels, but you can't help but wonder, wait, the baby face is beating up tired guys. <laughs> so it's, it's silly. But no, um, Cody's selling the surgery, and Gunther's beating him up. And Cody does eventually uh, take Gunther out of the thing. They had a lot of teetering on the ring apron, hardest part of the ring type of moments, yada, yada, yada. Cody wins. But then here's something crazy that happens. As Cody celebrates, there's fireworks indoors. There's fireworks outdoors. The place is exploding. The match is over, I think. But Co then Cody, what does he do to celebrate when he leaves the ring? He jumps over the top rope and lands on the floor. Which, in my opinion, effectively makes Rey Mysterio the winner. Rey never entered. Rey never got eliminated. Rey Mysterio, in my opinion, is the winner of the 2023 Royal Rumble. That's what I say. Congratulations to Rey Mysterio. We move on to the Mountain Dew match. This is the Mountain Dew match sponsored by Pitch Black. Uh, Bray Wyatt wrestles L.A. Knight. Bray Wyatt is the babyface. L.A. Knight is the heel. And Bray Wyatt has never been beaten up by this heel and continues to torture him every week for a couple of months. Also... There's outside interference in this match. We'll get to it. 
the only person interfering in the feud, the X Factor, the middleman, whatever, is this Uncle Howdy character, who is a person in a costume of some of, of, of some of some sort of some sort, who is a person in a costume of some sort, but the announcers cannot tell us if Uncle Howdy is Bray Wyatt or a separate guy or some manifestation or somehow Bray Wyatt's imagination manifested an actual guy. No one seems to know. Um, and I don't think anyone there actually knows. I'm a Bray Wyatt fan. It's gotten to the point where he's he needs someone to reel him in, I think. It's... Because now it, it's gone from highly calculated risk to stupid risk. And this match, the uh, Pitch Black match... Or no, the, excuse me, the Mountain Dew match uh, sponsored by Pitch Black... Okay, they, they attach, if you're not familiar, they attach the name Mountain Dew. They have a soda, a soft drink, or any product sponsoring the match. So the gimmick match, the, the name of the product has to be in a match. So the announcers have to refer to it as the, these two are going to fight in a dreaded, terrible, terrifying, deadly, violent Mountain Dew pitch black match. Which sounds ridiculous. How can you take it seriously that anyone could possibly be injured or be threatened in a match with a soft drink in the title? We don't know. Someone could walk out with diabetes. All right, diabetes is a lazy punchline, but I did it anyway. I was at Target. They sell diabetic socks, man. What the, what the hell are they doing to those socks? Just pouring sugar down the holes? That's ridiculous. What happens if you lose one of your diabetic socks? Then you got a, then you got a type 1 tie. <laughs> Damn it. It's a good joke. You got a type 1 sock on one foot. You got a type 2 sock on the other. A year later, the toe falls off. All right, Bob, are you done? This is just a no DQ match with the lights turned down and everything is in black light paint, including Bray Wyatt. He's painted up all spooky with contact lenses, so he kind of glows. The ropes glow, the ring glows, and so does the Mountain Dew logo in the ring that glows. The kendo stick apparently has black light paint on it or something. And LA Knight gets very little offense and just gets his ass kicked by Bray Wyatt. Eventually he gets pinned uh, pretty quickly in five minutes or so with the, with the finish. And then Bray takes LA Knight out to the backstage area. And the camera is very low so you can't see whatever crash pad they are lying on. Uncle Howdy, the guy who may be a person or an imaginary person. But if he's imaginary, why can we see him? I don't know. They, you'd have to drink a lot of Mountain Dew for this shit to make sense. Uncle Howdy jumps off the, the stage of the speakers onto a crash pad a mile and a half away from L.A. Knight, and everything explodes and things are on fire and we don't see L.A. Knight. And Bray is wearing a different spooky mask that we've never seen before during this time. So the, the number one babyface on SmackDown beats the heel in a no-DQ match with outside interference. After the heel has done nothing to him but kind of make fun of him, and the baby face has already beaten the crap out of the heel several times, and the only person to hit a move and get any heat on Bray Wyatt was Uncle Howdy, who may or may not be a real guy. Do I have that right? This is why I don't fuck with Mountain Dew. I like Wild Cherry Pepsi Zero, which is the same great regular taste of Wild Cherry, but none of the sugar, none of the calories in Pop Squad. You can do this, Bray Wyatt can do this. Maybe Uncle Howdy could do this if he was a real guy. I don't know, but L.A. Knight can do this because he's been awesome in this. I want to say something about that afterwards. With all these guys and yourselves, you can do You can go to pepsicola.com backslash zero sugar backslash wild cherry. Enter promo code Bob Squad. Nothing happens. But something did happen for L.A. Knight in this entire feud. Uh, he's used it to show he can talk. Maybe more importantly, uh, show that he can roll with whatever silly crap they give him. And make as much chicken salad as possible out of the chicken shit that is on a piece of paper. We're coming from Bray Wyatt's mind if they're letting him do whatever he wants to do. Which seems to be the case. I just, I just said, because I don't see Triple H. Triple H is a smart guy. He's not a particularly... Doesn't seem like a particularly creative guy. <laughs> um... He's not, he's not an artsy creative guy. He's not like a, you know, that kind of creative. He's inventive, but he's not, you know, he's not that kind of starving artist creative kind of guy. 
it's not really his bad. He's he's more meathead creative. Um, you know, he's more basic storyline, and meathead is kind of a stretch, but you know, you know what I mean. He knows wrestling. Uh, sorry, Bray, wasn't happening. But speaking of Uncle Howdy, who is not in this next match, but you think he would be, Alexa Bliss wrestles Bianca Belair, and this was the uh, Fanta. WWE Raw Women's Day was not. It was not brought to you by Fanta. Alexa Bliss does not like to get physical. She, I mean, everyone blocks things and puts their hands in front of kicks and punches. Alexa Bliss does not want to get hit at all. It is obvious. Bianca did not look particularly thrilled with the match. Bianca's super athletic. Bianca likes to go, go, go. And I think Alexa just wasn't there for her. Alexa is great at acting, but she's not a great... I don't want to use the cliche. Acting is all reacting. I mean, I think it is, but still. Alexa doesn't interact with fans. She just acts. She just does the monologue, and it's almost like she's blocking out however the audience reacts instead of playing to them, which Bianca will do, and I think a baby face has to do it as much as a heel, but uh, you know, that's a different conversation, I guess. But Bianca hits her finish one, two, three. I think it's just time for Bianca to move on. And then Alexa sat there, but it's not really about Bianca because Bianca leaves. So Alexa can sit there and a spooky Uncle Howdy video plays anyway, even though he just jumped into a crash pad three miles away from LA Night. And everything under black lights was on fire. Do I have that right? Spooky video brought to you by Mr. Pig Cola. How about that? Okay, it was Bob. Stop it. Stop it. Two matches left. The fourth match was the Women's Royal Rumble match. Brought to you by Serge Cola. Enough. Uh, Rhea Ripley. She got speared by the, uh, the Glamazon. Beth Phoenix. And Rhea Ripley draws number one and she looks grumpy. Liv Morgan is number two. And uh, some other people. Dana Brooke. Bailey, a big star, comes out there. B-Fab is in there for a few seconds, and she leaves quickly. She comes out there with Top Dollar, which, which gave Michael Cole nothing but pure delight. B-Fab does not last long. I think Rhea tosses her. Um, who else is showing up in this thing? Yeah, Team uh, Kai and Sky came after Bailey. So instead of building the Bailey, they had Bailey come out, Dakota, and then EO Sky. I think they were back-to-back, -to -back too, would come out. 11 and 12 or 9 and 10 or whatever the hell it was and come out and help Bailey out. Roxanne Perez, who I've never seen before, I guess is the NXT Women's Champion and she was there for a few minutes hit some stuff and then they gave her the EVO. Uh, so damage control is controlling this with lots of damage to everyone. Number 12 is Mrs. Gargano herself, Candice LeRae. The poison pixie they call her. I'm sexually attracted to her. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. There's no man. Right down. Um... Hope that's cool. But uh, damage control is in charge. And uh, what else is happening? Becky Lynch. And by the way, this was a long aisle in the San Antonio, uh, whatever the name of the dome is. I don't really know. I don't give a shit. But it's really long. So Becky had to angrily power walk this whole thing. It's very funny. But uh, Becky's in there, and she gets jumped by Kai and Sky and Bailey and beat up on the outside. So she's in there, but she's not in there. Uh, this is when you start entering people. After one of these things, you just enter someone who no one cares about. So they correctly went with Tegan Knox, who has different colored hair. And oh god, no one. Tegan's, Tegan Knox's. Tegan Knox's entrance was brought to you by RC Cola. So that was nice. Number 17, this was fun. I liked it. The crowd really liked it. I think it had a little bit of a fizzle afterwards. I don't think there's a lot of people who keep up with her because she's so fast. I'm talking about Asuka. Asuka came out after a month or so of social media silence and some cryptic things and crypto cryptically whatever. Secretly tweeting. <laughs> Secret whatever. Kind of vague tweeting that shades of her, her Japanese gimmick Kana would come back. And obviously they're still going to call her Asuka. I think we have to... I mean, I know there are people I saw already comments. Why are they calling? How come they're not calling her Kana? Well, the idiots. No one in that building, ninety percent and ninety-seven percent of that building doesn't know what Kana is. They just know they know Asuka. So she can act, she can dress like she used to and do the war paint and wrestle more like she used to. But 
but keeping the name Asuka whether you like it or not. And I think it's a good idea. I actually I agree with that. Asuka comes in kicking, punching, and she's got the new kind of evil face paint and outfit. And I dare I say, I, I always liked, uh, I've, you know, crush on Asuka a bit. But, uh, but I mean, she's like she's only 10, 15 pounds lighter, too. She came out. Um, I think she's 41 or something. But uh, looked amazing. But uh, Piper Niven, I haven't seen her in a while, came out at number 18. A uh, large gal, low center of gravity, but she was moving people around. Uh, I, don't, I forget if Asuka tossed anybody. I really don't. She must have gotten rid of somebody. But, oh, this made me laugh. Number 19 or 20, I forget. Chelsea Green, another internet darling, because she's married to the Cardona guy, the Zack Ryder guy. Everyone loves Chelsea. I'm, I'm indifferent to Chelsea Green. I, I'm not sold, but I'm not hating. Um, I'm not against her either. But Chelsea Green comes out, and I know the internet's losing their minds. Oh my God, Chelsea Green! And she comes out, and in three seconds is tossed over by Rhea Ripley. Hilarious, just for the reaction, just for the reaction of online. I laughed out loud. Um, kind of got a kick out of it. Becky gets in there, and she starts tossing kind in the sky, but then. Bailey tosses out Becky. Oh no, Becky Lynch is a huge star. She can't lose. But then Bailey gets tossed out by Liv Morgan. Oh god, Bailey's out too. And Bailey and Becky brawl. Um, actually, Becky brawls with the three of them into the crowd, which is kind of silly. Pardon me, I belched. I'll teach you. Zelina Vega is dressed like a video game character of some kind. Hilarious. Lacey Evans. I am into the new Sergeant Slaughter Lacey Evans. I love it. I think Lacey does it really well. I like the look. I liked her SmackDown look better than a Rumble look. SmackDown was the day before this, but whatever. I guess she didn't want to be gross and wear the same outfit twice. So kudos to her for not being smelly. So good for Lacey Evans. Looks like a million bucks. Super athletic. Her, you know, she does have a good heel-like bitchy snarl to her. She's got the marine background. She's a believable ass kicker. She hits and she doesn't seem to mind getting hit. Take notes, Alexa. So, um, I think the only thing that hurts her is the half a dozen stops and starts that have already happened. If this happened, this gimmick just came up in a vacuum, and there was very little of the the sassy Southern Belle or whatever the hell it was. And I know she went away for like a year or so to have another baby. She was impregnated, I guess, by her husband, I assume. Not my business, I don't want to know. But um, I guess somebody had a, had a had ejaculated in her vagina, I guess. I wasn't there. I, I don't know. And uh, the sperm from the semen fertilized the egg. And then a fetus developed in the uterus. So, And then she gave birth to that, that human fetus, which is a baby. Now, you can argue on when it became a baby. I really don't want to have that argument here on a wrestling podcast. But at some point, the fetus did become a baby. That is correct. Uh, you can argue when. That's amongst yourselves. But now she has an extra baby. She has one more baby than she did before. So she is still a mother, but now a mother to a, an additional additional child. Uh, adding one to the number of however many children she had before, I do not know. I don't make it my business. But biologically, that is what happened. I'm not wrong. I'm not wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm not wrong. I'm not a crazy person. You think I'm a crazy person? I'm not a crazy person. I'm not a goddamn lunatic. I'm not going to start losing my mind. I'm not going to lose my mind. Lacey Evans looked great here. Michelle McCool is in the audience with her kids and they play her music. <laughs> Fuck. I wanted to keep a straight face for that too, but I lost it. This made me laugh. She's in her, her Christian sweatpants. Let me explain. She's wearing Uggs and these sweatpants, which, which are still really tight. They don't look that comfortable. But, um... She, uh, she's got crosses. She's very, very Christian. She's, like, really Christian. She's, like, a... They're, like, a... Like, an Orthodox Christian or something. I don't know what they are. So, she's, yeah, she's really... She's, like, Shiite Christian. Like, it's so hardcore Christian. And there's crosses, and so there's... there's so the pants have one cross on each buttock, each butt cheek. Which... <laughs> I'm not a spiritual man or a religious man, but I think if I were, <laughs> maybe my ass wouldn't be the place to display the worship. <laughs> but 
But it is for Michelle McCool, okay? Whatever. Um, so she's in there. She's in there for a long time, too. Michelle McCool. Which, and The Undertaker, the father of the children, is not. And who the fuck was watching those kids? I don't know how old the kids are. I don't want to know, but I'm pretty sure they're really young. Like, under 10, for sure. And it's just a... You just have famous people's kids now and the Who the fuck was watching the kids? Because she, she acted surprised. She's in, like, the second or third row that they were going to play her music. Which puts so many holes in all the logic here. The w, are you suggesting WWE played the music of a Rumble instrument without telling that person they're in the Rumble? And played the music anyway because they showed her on camera in the audience before? Or are we suggesting Michelle McCool is so oblivious to, to the situation and is so bad at checking her emails or whatever that she did not know she was in the Royal Rumble but coincidentally happened to go to this show and bring her children and then thought, wait, I, ha I wrestle once a year for a few minutes in the Royal Rumble. I should abandon my kids for a chance to win a match at WrestleMania where I'm going to get hurt because I haven't stretched or hydrated properly. Ugh. It was stupid. Sloppy Blackheart still wrestles there. She comes out in a tank, then jumps out of it. And then uh, Jey Uso commandeered the tank and drove it into a wall. He was arrested shortly after. That is not true. That is fake. Fake news. Nikki Cross sprinted the whole goddamn entranceway. Sweet Jesus. At number 30, of course, it's a surprise return special entrant. Nia Jax returned. Man, I hope this was a one-off. I'm not a fan. She was big and probably still is. Uh, she had a stare down with Tamina, who no one is Mina then. Uh, what the hell happened? Anyway, somebody, was it Lacey Evans? No, it was Ra Raquel Ra Rodriguez. I keep saying Gonzalez because that's what I know her as. She, Raquel Rodriguez, I gotta say, was really awesome in this. Keep in mind, Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley, numbers two and one, respectively. I've been in there the entire time, similar to Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre. Um, this is another example of two Rumbles doing the same thing in the same year. Last year was surprise number 30, UFC entrant shows up and wins. It was really blatant with Brock and Ronda. This was still the same freaking thing, more or less. Except for the men, number 31, and for the women, I'll spoil it now, Leah Ritt, number one wins, but anyway... Um, so Nia Jax is 30. Rhea Ripley goes to body slam her and can't. And Rhea Ripley's very strong, but a body slam requires someone to... Usually their right hand on your left hip. I used to like to move my right hand to the guy's left hip instead of his right, because you can look up straight and show your face, whoa, I don't want to get body slammed, and get body slammed. And your left hand goes on her back and pushes off. But Nia Jax does not strike me as someone who is hiding a lot of muscle under there. And Rhea has been in there for a freaking hour. This was never going to work. When I saw her go for it, I go, it's not working. She won't get it. And she didn't. Rhea Ripley then went to hit her pump handle slam thing. Um, what is that, a nightmare or something? I don't care. She hits her pump handle slam thing on Nia Jax because Rhea has not done her finish yet and she does it to Nia. I don't think Nia was more than two feet off the ground. It was more like a twist, a fall on her side. And Nia wasn't going up for Rhea, and Rhea was nowhere near the strength to, at this stage of the game to pull that off. It was a recipe for disaster. It sucked. Um, and then they had to do the spot where all six or seven of them, however many are still in, I forget, all toss Nia Jax out. Again, Ra Raquel Rodriguez was great in this rumble, and people were getting behind her. They were starting to get fired up. I, don't, I mean, it might be San Antonio. There's a heavy Latino population there as well. I don't really know the answer to that. But either way, um, she looked like a million dollars. The only thing I wish she would... She doesn't have to smile all the time when she's not wrestling. She's walking to the... Even if she's mad, they attack her. She runs to the ring and smiles. It's so over the top. And she has a lovely smile, but I'm just saying, it doesn't make sense. Save it. Save it for when it counts. Anyway, Asuka is still in there. Asuka, Liv Morgan, and Rhea Ripley are all on the ring. Avon Hardest part of the ring. Um, 
And what happens, uh, someone's got to fall off. Asuka goes for the mist. The mist is blue now. Rhea ducks. Liv Morgan gets the mist. Liv Morgan is blinded. Rhea Ripley sneaks in the ring and kind of kicks, uh... No, she kicks... She kind of... I think she meant to do, like, a, a kick in the knee, which is really kick in the quad. To fucking... Who's calling me? Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. Okie dokie, about two or so hours have passed in the last one second that you're listening to this. Uh, I was talking to my buddy Jesse, he was driving back from a comedy show. Sometimes when one of us is driving back late, we call the other one, and the other guy just kind of keeps the other guy awake for a little while, so I was doing that. But nevertheless, you hear this when you hear this. Uh, Rhea Ripley, again, I said she knocked off Asuka. She, I think she would, she kind of grazed Asuka. I think she, maybe they missed a little bit, but um, she was trying to kick Asuka's leg out from under her. But she just kind of grazed her, and Asuka kind of tumbled off the ring apron, hardest part of the ring. And then Liv and Rhea are on the ring apron. Remember, Rhea is blinded by the mist, because Asuka had not missed with the mist. If the mist had missed, then Morgan wouldn't have the blue stuff on her face. But Asuka had not missed with the mist. She hit it with the mist. So uh, Liv was hit with the mist, and I bet, um, it looks like I missed the point, lol. But anyway, it's Liv and Rhea. Number one and two are also the last two, which I don't think... Not since Bulldog and Michaels in 95, I think. I don't know. The statistics get harder to keep track of every year. Who cares? They're both on the ring apron, hardest part of the ring. Rhea is on the, uh, she's on her back. She does, uh, like a head scissors, and Liv takes a big flip bump off the ring apron, hardest part of the ring, onto the, uh, onto the floor there. Your winner of the Royal Rumble is Rhea Ripley. Um, the Women's Royal Rumble always is going to have more apron eliminations than standard get chucked or clotheslined over the top because, well, the women are shorter and it's harder to get there in the same ring as the guys. So it's going to be harder to get over that thing. So you're always going to see way more apron eliminations. With that said, this particular women's rumble had the most regular over-the-top rope throws in addition to a ton of apron eliminations. And I think the men did a better job of not abusing the apron eliminations, which I think is important going forward that the men do fewer apron eliminations because the women are going to do a bunch of those regardless and it's not a knock on them it's just you know just a fact of life as LA Knight would say um so that's just something to think about because I've said this before and it's been a while um of all the firsts that the women can have the first Wrestlemania main event first Hell in a Cell first Elimination Chamber Money in a Bank etc etc they're still in the same 20 by 20 ring as the guys and that's always going to be a little bit of a disadvantage, or a lot. Cause they probably have to be in better cardio shape, because you got to run farther to go rope to rope and buckle to buckle. Uh, so they got to they got to be extra exhausted up in there. But it's just one of those things. They're in the exact same ring. That's the one first. That's the one constant. You're, you're not going to change. As good as their production team is, they're not going to change rings in between. And how condescending would that be? The first Women's Royal Rumble was in 2018. Oscar was the winner. And um, I was so happy that they gave the women the traditional over-the-top rope rules instead of the just go out of the ring and you're eliminated rules that they were using for the, the diva era and all that. Because uh, I thought if they went with that, that easier rule, just go out of the ring, it would have been kind of condescending and then I think the, w the women would look less than if they did it that way. I don't think it would be as good. Um, so it's better this way. Just deal with the apron. Because I'm not a fan of the, a lot of ring apron el eliminations. I like a few of them. Uh, but it has to be what it has to be. And they did a really good job of, uh, of making those as different as they can. But still something those, those characters would do, etc. Rhea Ripley wins. Does she wrestle Bianca at WrestleMania or Charlotte? Uh, part of me thinks it's better for Rhea and cements her as a bigger star to beat Charlotte. Uh, Bianca, I mean, both Bianca and Charlotte are baby faces right now, which is good. If Rhea beats, beats Bianca, fine. I mean, Bianca, I think, won it last year's WrestleMania from Becky and, and with no interruptions, I don't think. She's had it this whole time. So there's set to be a change of the guard there, one way or another. Uh, I, I think Rio benefits more from beating Charlotte, but e either way, honestly, either match is going to just tear it down. 
Um, I don't think Bianca and Charlotte is the way to go right now. I think we need a double, <laughs> a double title change right there. Um, because I, th I think Rhea is, uh, to, to draw number one and win it, obviously they're telling, they're telling us that she is the division in many ways or, um, going forward, Becky and Charlotte are going to have to be two and three. You take your pick. I don't want to know as far as the stars and Bianca's in that mix too, I guess, really. I don't know. That's, uh, that's down the road. Let's get to the main event. Oh no, that Hardy guy has to sing a, a song. Where are my notes? That Hardy guy has to sing a song first. And it has to suck. And it did. So mission accomplished. Kevin Owens wrestles Roman Reigns as he did two Royal Rumbles ago for the championship. Uh, regular rules. No Usos and, and Solo ringside. It's just Paul Heyman and Sami Zayn with Roman Reigns. Uh, not much to say. I... Uh, they didn't do the long, crazy, false finish series to the degree that they usually do in a Roman match. I mean, the show was running really freaking long, and there was a lot. It was a big, long aftermath. I mean, the, the show was ultimately, without the pre-show, it definitely broke four hours, like four and a half. So with a pre-show, you're talking sitting there for five and a half, five and a half hours of this. It's getting kind of crazy, right? So uh, Roman and Kevin Owens have their match. It's a fine match. Both have great matches. Both have great matches with each other. Nothing's wrong with it. And it's fine. Um, the people... And it did... I mean, this is not really a, a complaint because the people did get what they wanted. Um, everyone in the... All 55,000 people in that building knew Roman Reigns is keeping this championship. He's not going to lose it to Kevin Owens right now. What they want to see is what happens with Sammy. So in a way, it kind of hurt these guys... It hurt their match a little that people are just waiting for the finish. And it's good for them to want the finish. They're supposed to want the baby face to beat the heel. People are, supposed to, people are supposed to want the finish to come, not, you know, fight forever, which is stupid. But Roman Reigns, on the flip side of that, also tends to have 10-minute long finishes. So when I say they went to the finish 10 minutes in, that doesn't mean they went home early. It means their finish is a year and a half long. There is a referee... Oh, there's a few funny quotes from the announcers I just want to say. Um, at one point, Corey, Graves, and Michael Cole are arguing, and Cole responds, because I was told for 25 years to look at my monitor, that's why. Very funny. Uh, Kevin, they, they do a referee bump, and Sami Zayn takes way too long and kind of bumbles to give Roman the chair that Roman called for, and we can see the beginning. Paul Heyman's getting frustrated. Roman's down with Sammy. Sammy is almost in the way for a spear through Owens. So basically, Owens is getting killed. And he can't defend himself. So normally, a referee would stop a match. But why would they do that? Owens takes two of these goofy bumps on his steps. He did them like once six months ago. And I'm sure I recorded a thing here. And said something to the, to the nature of... He should never do that again. But if he does, only a big time matches. He hasn't done it since... And he did two of them here, and it makes perfect sense. He takes this awful, awful bump where he just lands back first at a 45-degree angle on the jagged metal steps. And the first one looked like he, he hit his skull on the back of him. Which, and you, you, those things look like they'll split your skull open. But either way, they got to be horrifically bad for your spine. Um, but Owens took the first one, and some guy in the front row, some idiot, some knucklehead, some some goober goes one more time. It's sad in modern wrestling that anyone is chanting to for the main heel to do something horrific to the baby face one more time. And maybe it's just that guy who's an idiot, but I don't know. I see a lot of they just want car crashes and catchphrases and everything else. There's no real. You know, maybe it's because the people already know Kevin Owens is not winning this. Uh. Mercifully, Kevin Owens takes another spear shortly after. One, two, three, Roman wins. And if, usually I hate it when a Rumble match is not the last match of a Royal Rumble. I don't like it when they do a heavyweight championship match afterwards. 
because then you could more easily predict the main event of WrestleMania, and that's no fun. I think the Rumble should end the thing. In most years, the men's Rumble does end, but then it does end the show. But again, this is Roman Reigns, and this is a very hot angle. And this is one of the few times I can honestly say, yeah, good call. There's a big angle afterwards. Roman Reigns uh, has Kevin Owens beat. And the Usos and Solo are there, and they're beating the shit out of uh, Owen. Sammy's watching. Uh, they handcuff Owen to the ropes. Owens is damn near dead. And Roman Reigns is about to blast Kevin Owens in the head with a chair, but we all know that's not going to happen because chair shots were outlawed in 2007 for reasons we won't get into. So, none of that. So we know something, but of course... Sammy jumps in the way and he defies the tribal chief and people are losing their minds. Paul Heyman's face is great. The Usos' faces are great. Solo makes the same face, but that particular face is also great. It'll be easy to make an action figure for Solo because you don't have to worry about what face he's making. He makes that face. He doesn't need an alternate head. What face would it make? Okay. So Roman says, you know what? He hands him the chair and he tells Sammy, this is your test. You do it. And Sammy does it, and he milks it, milks it, milks it, milks it, milks it. Owens has his back to Sam. Roman has his back to Sammy. He's pointing to Owens. Sammy finally hits Roman in the back with the chair. And the place comes unglued with noise. I have not heard a reaction that loud since last year's... uh, the glass breaking of Austin being on the Kevin Owens show, oddly enough, Kevin Owens is involved. Uh, it was the first day of last year's WrestleMania, the two days. And the day after, with the surprise Austin thing was probably equally as loud. But when that glass broke last year for Austin on that night, I was like, that's bananas. Um, and this matched it. It was crazy loud. And it's at half the people at that WrestleMania. And it was as loud. They lost their minds. The Bray Wyatt return in September-ish, I think, I also had a crazy Philadelphia, I want to say. Extreme Rules. Uh, that was also a really crazy one, but but it's not... But that was in an arena. So, you know, it wasn't... Uh, it was still insanely loud, but, but worth noting. Anyway, the plate and Sammy just has the chair and he looks at the Usos and Solo and he just drops the chair and he's like, I did it. I know what's coming. And Solo and Jimmy Uso beat the crap out of Sammy. Jay won't do it. He knows because because he's conflicted. There is family, but he knows what they're doing is wrong. He knows it. And he's yelling at Sammy like, why? Why would you do this? Why would you do this to me? Why would you put me in this position? And uh, they, they beat the shit out of Sammy. Uh, Solo... Jimmy and Roman lays uh, lays Sammy out. He, and of course, I knew Roman was going to give Sammy ten chair shots for the one chair shot he got. But I think just before those, Roman looks at Jimmy, and Jimmy just turns and he walks away. And that got an equally, just about equally loud reaction as Sammy's chair shot on Roman. Wow, wow, the emotion. We all knew going into this match, there's no point in Roman and Kevin Owens going around the arena with every chair and table and this, this, and this. Um, They still got all their shit in, and Kevin Owens did some big splashes off the top on Roman, but there was no reason for them to be going. They did the barricade, I guess, because if it's a Roman, Lashley, or Brock match, or Braun, you always have to break that stupid barricade with a spear. Always, always, always. And no one had done it yet, so they did it. But... With the exception of that, um, they didn't have to f- fall off anything big and go through tables. And I think the last man standing match two years ago, there was a forklift involved at one point. I really don't remember. Uh, that was the empty arena, the PC era Royal Rumble. That was that one. So God help you. But uh, this is an A plus show. The Mountain Dew match, Alexa Bianca. Oof, a little rough. What else was there? Oh, the Women's Rumble. The women's Rumble? I mean, the Men's Rumble, like I said, was one of the best. I think it's in the top five best ever. So I don't think it's fair to say the Women's Rumble wasn't as good as it. It wasn't, but it was 
there's less w compared to other women's rumbles. That one was really freaking good. The first one had that, and it was also a super reunion nostalgia pop fest too. And Asuka was really in everybody's that that fresh NXT fresh version of Asuka was really was really loved. So it's the, for the women's rumbles. The two best ones are either this one or the first one, in my opinion. That's what I think. So can't really complain about the show. It was eight days long. That's my only complaint. But we gotta move on. Uh, we're almost at an hour. Hardest part of the ring. Uh, thank you for listening to this. Whoever listens to this. I'm some fucking guy. I'm gonna hit stop. Goodbye. Oh wait, no, not yet. Oh, on my YouTube channel, if you like the Sun Bob videos, episode five five and a final episode, episode five of, of Holy Heartbreak, the Batman series, where what he does after Selena Kyle dumps him. Um, losing my voice after she dumps him. I didn't finish the sentence. Uh, that's coming up within a few hours, so check that out. Go to Motu, all the good stuff. And uh, one great, another great thing about the Women's Rumble, I forgot one more thing, one more thing. When they go over to top rope, which is, again, they're shorter, it's going to be harder for them to clear it. Nine times out of ten, they're going to land on the hardest part of the ring. The hardest part of the ring, ba da ba da 